What's going on everyone, Bass here, and today we're going to be breaking down and going over the second portion of OTAs for the Green Bay Packers. So before we get this video started, I do want to remind you guys, uh, my giveaway does end this Friday. If you're unaware of my giveaway, I'm giving away a signed Marquez Valdez Scantling jersey. It's a video right before this, um, I'll link it above as well. Uh, just go over there, it's pretty easy to join, and again, I'll be giving that away Friday. I'm giving it away because this channel just hit 20,000 subscribers, so again, thank you very much for that. And speaking of subscribers, if you aren't subscribed already and you do enjoy my content and enjoy Packers updates, news, and highlights, definitely consider going down below and clicking the subscribe button. All right, so let's get into the second portion of OTAs for the Packers available to the media that happened today on June 2nd. And we'll start with who was not at these OTAs. And of course, Aaron Rodgers is still not at these OTAs. Um, he's not going to be at these OTAs. Uh, we'll see if he even shows up for minicamp and all that. Uh, sight to be seen at this point. The mandatory minicamp starts on the 15th and runs through the 17th of June. Uh, keep in mind, OTAs are optional, so there's no real point to make a big thing out of this. Um, he is losing money for doing so, but again, he's kind of just doing his thing, and I think the Packers and him will come with agreement soon, and we will see him this offseason. Devontae Adams is indeed still out, as he should be. He's looking to get a new deal and get paid, so that makes sense. A uh, new player out today was Elton Jenkins. I don't know if that's due to injury or personal reasons, but Elton Jenkins was out today. So just like last time, Jair Alexander is still out, and then the slew of veteran wide receivers, including Alan Lazard, MVS, Devin Funchess, and Equinemia St. Brown were also out again. New wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins was present, though. Young cornerback Kadar Holman was still out of OTAs, still raising unknown, and then um, other cornerback that was out, Last OTA session, Stanford Samuels actually was here today, but he wasn't practicing. So this is still interesting that these wide receivers are still sitting out. Um, I would assume every single one of them will be there for mandatory minicamp. Um, but, uh, you know, you saw Economy of St. Brown throwing with Jordan Love like, about a month ago. So it's kind of interesting to see him not there. Um, and then Devin Funch is not there at all. That just makes zero sense, like I said last video. So the big news for today's OTA and the main headline here is that David Bakhtiari is back at OTAs. He's not practicing, but he's moving around great. You'd have no idea that he tore his ACL late last December. It seems David Bakhtiari's recovery is doing really, really, really well. He is way ahead of schedule, and honestly, I would not be shocked if he were to somehow play week one now. So I do have a few clips of David Bakhtiari here warming up, so I'll get these rolling. It's just crazy to think this guy tore his ACL late December. It just doesn't, he's, he's moving around wonderfully. So here's another one I'll let roll. And again, it doesn't even look like he's going through any injury rehab, which is absolutely insane. Just shows the type of demeanor David Bakhtiari has and what a beast he really is. And the last one I have here, David Bakhtiari, I'll let it roll. Still looking fast as ever, um, doing the ladder drill here. Just absolutely insane, even catching a ball. I, I hope a play this year they have for David Bakhtiari in the goal line. It makes him an eligible receiver and he catches a touchdown. This guy deserves it. So the boat Blake Bortles did practice today, last OTA session, obviously he was not practicing, but today he did, now I have a clip of him throwing here, and I just want to show you his very, very weird release, that just looks so slow and lanky, it's just, it's a very, very ugly release, I'll let it play once more, so, he can... oh gosh, but he, hey, he made it in the net though. Alright, so now we're going to move on to some Jordan Love clips, so I'll let these play and let you guys watch these, uh, here's Jordan Love under center, play action, rolls out, stops in the pocket, throws a dart right into the net here let that play again so again Jordan Love um, you know it is just OTAs it's not padded there's no real pressure but um, he's looking nice he's looking he's looking develop he's developing well and just in general he's looking um, pretty pretty good so here's another clip by Jordan Love out of shotgun a quick three-step drop and throws a nice uh, post route here to wide receiver Bailey Gaither I'll let that run again so just doing um you know some route route combinations here uh, nice throw on a post, nice spiral, nice tight spiral, a little high, but uh, uh, Bailey Gaither is another player who, who did well today. I'll talk about him in a little bit here. So here's another clip of Jordan Love throwing, also simultaneously throwing is quarterback Kirk Benkert to another wide receiver. I can't see who Kirk ends up throwing to, but again, just a three-step drop by Jordan Love here to a deep post to wide receiver Chris Blair. So let that run once more. Again, just a simple concept, three-step drop, you know, throwing a deep post, nice tight spiral, a little bit behind him, could have led him a little better, but decent throw. So again, here's another clip of two quarterbacks throwing, but this time it's Jordan Love and Blake Bortles. Blake Bortles throws the dig to Mercedes Lewis, and Jordan Love throws an absolute dime to Robert Tunyon on this flag route. Very nice, um, 
Uh, sells, the, sells the post, runs the flag. Very nice throw over the shoulder. Perfect in stride. Very, very nice route. Very nice throw there. Um, and then, of course, Mercedes Lewis on the dig. Nice route. <laughs> So those are all the clips I have of the quarterbacks, primarily Jordan Love throwing the football. Uh, nothing much has changed since last week, but again, I still think Jordan Love is progressing nicely. He seems a little bit more focused than he did last year, and overall just making some nice throws out there at OTAs. All right, so now let's move on to the opening offensive line group for the first team with uh, David Bakhtiari obviously wasn't practicing with the first team. He was just rehabbing, and then also Elton Jenkins was absent, like I said earlier. So um, an interesting one was Ben Braden started at left tackle. Uh, John Runyon Jr. took Elton Jenkins' spot at left guard. Josh Myers stayed at starting center. Lucas Patrick stayed at starting right guard. And then Billy Turner moved back to that right tackle spot. Again, very interesting to see Ben Braden there at that left tackle spot. I thought someone like Nijman or, Cole, or rookie Cole Van Landen out of Wisconsin would have maybe taken that uh, backup left tackle spot with Turner at the right tackle spot. As for the opening first team defense, the defensive line was as follows. Um, Dean Lowry, Kenny Clark, and Kingsley Kiki. Nice to see Kiki getting the start there. I'm, I have high expectations of him this year. Linebackers are Preston Smith, Chris Barnes, Ty Summers, and Zadari Smith. The cornerbacks were Kevin King, Josh Jackson, and the safeties were obviously uh, Darnell Savage and Adrian Amos. So what's interesting is Ty Summers seems to be getting more looks than Kamal Martin here early in OTAs. I know I saw a lot of comments about Ty Summers last time. A lot of people do want him to succeed, myself included. I think he could be a good linebacker if he cleans up his tackling and gets more on there on the mental page. So I'm really interested to see how these young inside linebackers develop for this football team. Chandon Sullivan, again, getting first team reps in the star slash slot position, same as last week. And then when they ran dime, Amos joined Sullivan in that slot role on the opposite side, which then had Darnell Savage and Redmond at safeties. And then the outside corners during dime were Kevin King and Stokes. Now moving on to some team drill notes, Jordan Love actually made someone jump with the hard count, so obviously taking a page out of Aaron Rodgers' book there. One thing to note for today with Jordan Love is there seemed to be a lot of smaller throws, checkdowns, throws to the running backs, and things like that. And at one point, Jordan Love did throw to running backs on six of seven plays, so it seems today they wanted to hit his first read, get a read out there real quick, check down, which, you know, was... <laughs> What we wanted Aaron Rodgers to do before last year, we thought he was always taking shot plays and we wanted him to actually take the check down. So it's funny to see people annoyed at this, uh, you know, getting Jordan Love in that same group. It's good to have him practicing taking what's there rather than always wanting to take a shot play and score on that play. A lot of his interceptions in college was indeed on uh, a very gr aggressive throws, trying to go for it all in one play. So as I said earlier, it was a big day from rookie undrafted free agent Bailey Gaither out of San Jose State um, in one of the plays Bortles hit him deep versus the number one defense for a deep touchdown against Kevin King some say it was Kevin King some say it was Josh Jackson that hasn't really fully been clarified yet um, but it's very interesting to see that Blake Bortles hit him deep against you know one of our corners and he's an undrafted guy so uh, he's definitely going to be that undrafted wide receiver that everyone wants to make the roster this year and then also Jordan Love connected with Gaither on a third and 11, so nice to see them connect there and uh, get a first down on third and long. As for Jordan Love during the team drills, he did finish 10 of 17 with two sacks. He did throw an interception, but the interception was a perfectly placed ball to new wide receiver Tompkins, who basically went right through his hands, dropped it, was a tip drill, and then KB and Ento uh, ended up with the interception, so not Jordan Love's fault at all there. A fun matchup to watch today was two rookies with uh, Shamar Jean Charles and Amari Rogers. On one of the plays, uh, Jean Charles had perfect coverage on Rogers on a slant. Really nice pass breakup. And speaking of rookies, first round draft choice cornerback Eric Stokes also had a very nice day. He was blanketing wide receivers. So after the OTA, a few people went on to do press conferences, being Matt LaFleur, Lucas Patrick, and AJ Dillon. So I'm going to go through some of the quotes from them. So firstly, Matt LaFleur says David Bakhtiari's presence, even in rehab, is uplifting. And then quote unquote, he's really working hard. He's in excellent shape. We're just going to take it one day at a time. I think he's a little ahead of schedule. But then again, there's a long way to the start of the season. So again, I'm just agreeing with what I said. Um, I think David Bakhtiari is actually way ahead of schedule. And like I said, wouldn't be shocked to see him week one, which would be awesome. Matt LaFleur also said there is nothing to update on the Aaron Rodgers situation. Asked if he is if he expects Rodgers to attend mandatory minicamp next week, and LaFleur says, I don't know, we'll see come Tuesday. So no real update there. Doesn't seem too promising, but I, I am hoping that uh, they can come with an agreement and he at least shows up for the mandatory minicamp. We can all hope. Matt LaFleur also said he is not concerned about Jordan Love's checkdowns and OTA so far. Says their focus has been him reading with his feet, and LaFleur likes the way Love is attacked. 
uh, what he's been asked to do. LaFleur also says he wants to feature tight end Robert Tunyon in the offense more in 2021, which is crazy because he had, what, 11 touchdowns. He says Tunyon has improved more than anyone on the team since he became a head coach in 2019. Um, I'm, you know, I have to agree with him. Tunyon was a borderline fringe roster player in 2019, and he really came around. I think he played hurt um, in 2019, didn't get much, but definitely has came around. Now he's considered, you know, one of the better uh, red zone tight ends in the league and, you know, has a great connection with Aaron Rodgers. So hopefully if and when Aaron Rodgers comes back, uh, him and Tunyon can achieve even more this year. And then speaking of Rodgers, LeFleur also says not having Rodgers is a great opportunity to evaluate concepts themselves. Do they fit the team? And that basically means, you know, they'd run concepts before and with Aaron Rodgers, sometimes he can make not so great concepts look great because he's so good. So it's really nice for them to kind of have it with love here, Bortles and Bankert, and really evaluate their concepts. So also in the press conference, Lucas Patrick spoke and he says, Love has made a jump. His cadences are more on cue and you can tell his command of the offense has grown. So like, again, just gaining more and more confidence is more and more focused. And then AJ Dillon also said he thinks he and Aaron Jones can become the best running back duo in the league. He says it's more than thunder and lightning because both running backs are capable of both. And then Dillon also said um, his quads are the biggest in the NFL. And I, 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 <laughs> I can't disagree with that. So that's about going to do it for today. Basically, just want to go over uh, another OTA session by the Green Bay Packers and break it all down for you guys. Um, I'll do this pretty much every time there is a practice available to the media. I will break it down and release a video for you guys. So on that note, I'll catch you all in the next one. And as always, Go Pack Go!